morning everybody welcome back to my channel my name is becca and today we are doing a little bit of a day in the life plant chores type of thing i don't know i figured i would try to do a little bit different of a video as far as like a vlog style video because i don't know <laughs> My life has been very interesting lately, or has it? No, it has not been very interesting lately. I think that's why I want to switch it up. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I started out today by going out to the garden and just doing some watering, as you saw. And actually, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. So I got some other clips of the stuff that's growing in there. So I hope that you enjoyed that at least. I received the book that Maria from Bloom and Grow Radio wrote. And it's called Growing Joy. And I've been reading it at night and I'm already like 50 or 60 pages in after two days. And the book has helped me to already, only like 60 pages in, to reframe my mind around specifically my mornings and how I sort of tackle the morning and what I do in the morning and how I wake myself up and all this kind of stuff. So um, yeah, a big part of the beginning of the book is about coming to terms with screen addiction and also like realizing that we are so far removed from nature and it's like so normal to only exist inside. And it's just been a really good read so far and I really suggest that you guys get it. I'll link it down below if you are interested. Um, it's like a self-help plant book and I find it so enjoyable, especially because Maria grows food and she grows house plants and she's like a fellow planty business person, which is always fun to like connect with people over that. So it's just a really great book. And if you listen to her podcast, you can basically hear her talking while you're reading it's so nice um i just love when you can like hear an author's voice through the book which is really cool um i grew up reading and i studied literature in college and like we always learned about what a voice really was in writing and it really i don't know it's like a full circle moment knowing like after i wrote my book and like now i feel like my book really does sound like me like if you have watched my videos it probably sounds familiar if you've read my book and i feel the same about maria so yeah, I think that she did a really great job on the book and really suggest that you guys check it out if you haven't because it has already changed my frame of mind for how I start my day. And that is why I started my day by going out to the garden and watering. Number one, just to not be on my phone and technology first thing in the morning, but number two, to uh, like actually give my garden water. <laughs> because it has been so so hot i mean i'm not the only one experiencing a heat wave but it's been like in the hundreds in the last couple of days here in columbia missouri and that's really hot for us especially in well i guess maybe july that might be a little bit more normal but that's like really really hot for us but yeah so today on the agenda i don't want to have like too long of a talking intro which i've already been talking for a while but today on the agenda i have a couple videos to film i really want to finish out filming videos for july i forgot what month it was and i have some plant chores i'd like to do and just some general updates because i showed in a previous plant chores video that i had spider mites and i'm going to check on those plants again because i had to do another treatment on them so we are going to start our day by going out to the store because i have to buy pantyhose for my garden Basically, I have some melons growing on trellises, and if you just grow a melon on a trellis, you have to have some sort of contraption to hold them up, because if you don't, they will fall off because they're too heavy for the vine. So I've got some watermelon growing and some cantaloupe growing, as you saw, and I'm super excited about it, but I need to get something to like truss them up. And yeah, we got other plant chores to do later today, so I'm really excited to be hanging out with you. I've decided to come to Walmart to get the pantyhose, and also I realized that I lost my, or not realized, I remembered that I lost my Apple Watch charger, so I'm gonna see if they have that here too. Let's see. Okay, I'm in here and I have no idea where it is. Where do they keep the pantyhose? So I'm actually back now. I completely forgot that I went grocery shopping And all my groceries were sitting in the car for probably like 30 minutes And I don't know what that says about me because that's like pretty much the only reason why I went out anyway <laughs> I'm losing steam like I'm in an afternoon slump right now and I'm supposed to be filming like at least two videos today and I am in a slump so 
I'm going to film for this video and I hope that that motivates me to film for my other videos. Um, part of the reason that I'm like, uh, should I film those ones is because my hair is pretty dirty. <laughs> and like, I feel like I need to take a shower and like wash my hair before I make a sit down video. But I'm gonna show you this update on two of my plants and then I'm going to go try and rescue my hair. I think we're on like day four or five and it's it's probably in the territory if I need to wash it, but I have my Alocasia Lauterbachiana, something like that. It has had spider mites for a little while now and I'd say like two or three weeks I've been battling with it and I was using this product called Seven and I was using it because on the back here it says mites. You can see right there, mites. And I always suggest that when you're looking for a pesticide, if you're gonna go for like an, a pesticide type of thing, to look at the back of the bottle or like open up this like back matter of the bottle because there's usually some like information in here about the product and see if your pest you're trying to eliminate is listed. And I thought, you know, since these are spider mites, that mites would cover it, but apparently not. Somebody commented and said that this doesn't work for spider mites. I don't know though, it says it kills over 130 insects and pests without harming the plant. Oh, but it says for outdoor use. But spider mites do occur outdoors. We're just gonna evaluate this really quick because now I'm curious. It does do mealy bugs. Oh. It says on here, spider mites. Okay, if you can see, spider mites. Okay, so anyway, this is what I've been using and I didn't find that it was like mega effective, but I only did that one application and then I noticed that the spider mites were back, but spider mites work on a life cycle. Obviously they are a living thing, so they lay eggs and then it takes like, I think three to four five days for them to hatch and then you have another batch of spider mites which can then lay eggs again in another couple of days and so when you're treating your plant for spider mites or just any pest in general you have to be aggressive with them and treat them every couple of days so what i did last time was i got some hot water from the tap so it wasn't like really hot but it was hot enough and i ran it over the leaves and i got my Dawn dish soap, my blue Dawn dish soap, and I was just, I had like a yellow glove, this one specifically, and I rubbed the, and it has like ridges on it, and so I thought that would be good to like get in the creases, and so I put the Dawn dish soap in my hand, and I was just like moving my fingers around on it and just like rubbing the plant like this, and that seemed to be pretty effective. So we're gonna do that again today on this plant, and on this plant because unfortunately this one has spider mites too or it still has spider mites and i'm hoping that it'll pull through because i mean it doesn't look like that bad but we do have two leaves that are going to be on their way out soon you can see they have like some brown spots on the bottom and that leaves only two healthy leaves so obviously i'm always nervous when the plant is like getting down to the last couple of leaves. Like with this one, I think that it had like four or five when I noticed that it had the spider mite infestation and now we're down to two. And one of the leaves I cut off yesterday, it was so badly infested. I could actually see the spider mites crawling on the leaf. It was crazy. Spider mites are almost like imperceivable to the naked human eye, but if you look close enough and the infestation is bad enough, you can see their little bodies <laughs> crawling along the leaf very slowly. If you see something moving super fast, it's probably not a bad bug. If it's moving slowly, probably a bad bug. sufficiently scrubbed and I will be leaving the soap on there until tomorrow where I will wash it off. Tomorrow will be the last day of this cycle of 
taking care of these spider mites hopefully and then um, in five days I'll do three more days and hopefully they will be gone for good. I was also able to revive my hair thankfully so we have another day of this hair. I am just so pleased that I've been able to do this. I've been using dry shampoo and hairspray and like when my hair has like more product in it it just lasts longer and it's great. So anyway I'm going to switch to my other lens and we're going to film at least two videos, maybe three. We'll see how far I can go. Hi vlog. Okay, so I just finished filming one of those videos and uh, I'm having a moment where I'm like, that video wasn't very good, but I have a tendency to be very self-critical and I'm sure that it's fine. Um, but it just ended up being a bit short and I didn't really feel like I had a ton to say about the topic. So anyway, I am just going to move forward and edit the video and just see if it ends up being one that I'm willing to post. I really hardly ever film a video and don't post it. I usually do end up posting the videos because if I've spent the time to film it and edit it, I should use it. I don't know, sometimes I just don't feel it, but I got an email that I got a shipment of a plant that I ordered. Plants and Pamperin is a Instagram account and a, a nursery, but they were doing an Instagram sale. But I ordered a plant and I'm really excited about it. And I'm not going to say what the plant is called, but I'm gonna go get the box. I think it's in my mailbox or something because it wasn't delivered to the door. So it must be in my mailbox. So I'm gonna walk up there and I'm gonna get the plant and we're gonna unbox it. And then hopefully that gives me a little bit of motivation to finish my filming for the day. Because if I can film the second video, I'm good for the rest of the month. And that feels really good. Um, I'm gonna have to film next week for next month, but cause I usually film like a week in advance, but you know, I'm gonna be pretty set for the rest of the month and I can kind of chill out this weekend and like not have to worry about working as much. I was just having a full on conversation with myself because I thought that I was filming and I wasn't. So I received the package and I noted that it says fragile right in the spot that it got crushed, which is super funny. I don't know what happened in transit. It was definitely a, USPS situation, who knows, mail carrier situation, probably shoving it in my um, mailbox because they didn't want to walk or drive down my driveway, which I guess I can understand, but hopefully the plant is not damaged as a result. I'm just using this little screw to open it, which doesn't make any sense, but we're doing our best here. Also, as I was sitting here, this angle kind of looks nice to film. Like I really don't usually film with the light behind me, but I feel like this looks kind of good with my huge Monstera and then like these like trailing things. Okay, the box is open. Cute. I wish you guys could see Cooper right now. He is like sniffing. What is that? Ooh, I love when companies do this. We've got some cotton fluff for padding of the plants. Oh dear, oh dear, we got a soil spill. <laughs> it's falling all over the floor. Let's pull the cotton away. Oh, it's just gonna fall off. <laughs> all right, so it does not look damaged in any way. Actually, it looks like it's in perfect condition. Uh, yeah, so this is the philodendron uh, 69686 or something like that. I have lovingly called it the philodendron 69 whatever, and I am really excited about this. Look at these leaves. These are like alien leaves. Like they look very similar to like a philodendron Florida, except that they are like very, very like elongated and they have these tiny cute little ears. And I'm really excited about this. Ooh, they already have it sort of like on this little wood plank and the roots are like laying against it. So I feel like it's gonna need a plank like ASAP and it'll be able to go over in this section. So that's really exciting. I, yeah, I'm happy with this purchase. That was definitely worth it. I paid $75 for this. I feel like that was a good price. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Look at how big this leaf is. That is nice. And there's a new one on the way. So I love when plants arrive with a new leaf and that new leaf is like not damaged. Amazing, amazing. Okay, cool. So we gotta pop this up 
And I also have another plant that I need to pot up. It's my um, Hoya shepherdii that ended up in a unfortunate situation. It fell off of its shelf and the pot broke. So I'm gonna need to pot both of these up. Should probably be using a repotting station to do this. <sighs> but it's like so much to pick up and clean up after. I'm just gonna try to do this with as little mess as possible. <laughs> oh! I have this little tray. I'm gonna use that. Hopefully I can keep the mess contained in this tiny tray. Huh. Wouldn't that be nice if mom didn't make a big mess? Yeah. Let's check out the roots. So it already has a little bit of soil around this. And I'll probably keep a little bit of that with the plant, like as much as the roots will hold on to. So probably just that. And I picked out this pot for it. This is probably like a four, five inch terracotta pot. I think that'll be perfect. Yeah, that's perfect size. Oh, you know what? These roots down here are very much attached to this wood piece. So I feel like I can't remove it from this wood piece. It's like ingrained in this wood. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that in the future. Because I will have to address that because it is going to need like a, a taller piece of wood to climb eventually. But we're just gonna save that for later. We will figure that out another time. <laughs> uh. Somebody asked me in a Q&A where my soil scoop is because I haven't been using it. Um, I lose it like all the time. I thought that I found it and I'll like leave it in a bag of soil and then I'll forget about that bag of soil or something like the bag of soil will go missing and then also the scoop has gone missing as a result. It's like a whole thing. So yeah, I definitely need to get more soil scoops because I hate having dirty hands. She's been repotted, looks really good. And I think she'll be super happy in our new home or in her new home, not our new home. I've lived here for a long time. And now we've got this little Hoya. I don't know where my camera cut off there. We ran out of memory. We're back now. I really would like to put this up on my wall and not the shelf again because this is probably the second time I've had plants fall off that shelf and I'm just kind of over trusting it. I know that I can trust the wall and we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> all right, so those are all done and I'm gonna water them in and then get them back over here on the wall. I'm going through a, pro a thought process right now where I'm wondering if I should just push through not really wanting to film a video right now or not force myself to do it because usually when I force myself to film a video, I don't feel very good about it in the end, like kind of like the video that I just filmed and I was telling you that I'm like, eh, it's not that good. <laughs> what I really, really want to do right now is just take an early day. I mean, what time is it actually? Can I be done with work for the day? It is 2.35 and I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna film the video today. No, I'm not. I am gonna go out to the garden and I'm going to see if I can put my plants in these um, pantyhose that I bought today and see if that will work for them. They were kind of expensive. It was like $10 for, or no, no, not 10. It was like $8 a piece for these pantyhose. And I'm thinking that I'm gonna have to like cut them up and cut them open and see if it'll work. 
And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna go outside and do that. I mean, it is like excruciatingly hot and I don't know how long I'm gonna last out there. But at this point, I would rather do that than film a video. So I think that really means I should not film that today. And when I get back inside from working outside, it'll probably be like three o'clock and then it is a Friday, so I could cut it early. Um, but I can just like do some admin stuff on my computer. We'll just have to see. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have filmed a work with me video, like a work with me vlog type of thing on a Friday because Fridays are always like either half days or I'm like distracted all day. So let's go outside. These rocks are like burning me. I've created a heat island out here. <laughs> okay, welcome to my cantaloupe. I am going to see if I can give it a little bra situation. Oh, the rocks are like burning through my clothes. Ouch. Okay, I have got the Silken Mist Beautiful Sheer Tights. And wow, this is really something. Okay, I feel like I need to like cut it open. Like how does this stretch if there isn't a body stretching it for it? I don't really know how this is gonna work. I'm just gonna start messing around with this and hope for something good. really use a second person to just cut this right here. I don't know if you can tell, but I can completely understand why pantyhose are the optimal material for this because it's so stretchy. It just stretches right around it like a hammock, which is pretty cool. So I've still got more pieces I'm gonna do. I need to put one on a watermelon and I'm sure that there's more cantaloupe around here that I just haven't noticed yet. So I'm just gonna take a look through here. Given how hot it is out there, I am very lucky that I was able to even spend 10, 15 minutes out there. My entire body was sweating a lot after just a few minutes. So I came back inside after I trussed up all the ones that needed to be done. It was three cantaloupe and one watermelon. The watermelon didn't even really need it yet but I still figured I should do it. And actually, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that the watermelon that I'm growing this year are like really big watermelon. So I don't know how this is gonna go when it gets much bigger. I'm definitely gonna have to switch out the nylons to be like for something a little bit bigger. Uh, thankfully, I do have a lot of fabric around my house, but I think just like a Jersey knit fabric that like stretches would probably be fine or maybe not even something with stretch, something that just will just sit there and not stretch and just be a hammock. We'll see, as the watermelon grows bigger, I'll keep you updated, but the cantaloupe should be fine. I grew those cantaloupe last year and um, they get to be like a pretty good size, but they're not like massive like a watermelon would be, like not like super heavy. So I think that the pantyhose will hold up just fine. And the ones that I actually had to truss up were more towards the bottom. So I feel like as they grow bigger, they're just gonna end up resting on the garden bed like structure itself um, rather than the nylons. So we'll just have to see. But the one that I, I actually only ended up using one leg or one leg and a half of the other leg of the nylons. So it actually did go a lot further than I thought it would because it does stretch like a lot. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully I will have positive updates for you at a later date for all of that. But since my workday is over, I decided I'm just done for the day and I'm just gonna like tidy up the house and then 
just chill out. So since my workday is done, I'm going to stop filming now. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing sort of what I do during a workday. This isn't exactly like a quintessential workday. It's usually a little bit more productive, but <laughs> I decided to film on a Friday and I shouldn't have done that. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing a Friday in my life and um, I will see you guys in a future video. Bye.